I want to talk to you about Freemasonry. Okay. And uh, at one point, you were the Grand Master of Mason in, uh, in uh, California. Correct. So how did you first become a Mason and why? Uh, well, I became a Mason when I was 21. And what made you do that? Uh, my dad was a Mason. It still is. My dad's still alive. He's still living? Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm so All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am so excited to bring you this video. This is an interview that was done by yeah, Jesse Lee Patterson. And guess who he is interviewing? You know, who you'll be watching him interview in this video? A grandmaster of the Freemason. Now, in this video, you're going to hear the names of American presidents or you know, some of American presidents who have been members of the Freemason you know, society. And another person you want to know if he is a member of Freemason is President Donald Trump. I'm not going to tell you whether he is or not. You will find out in this video. And then you will come to understand that no matter how they try to make it an open society, it is a very deep, secret society rooted in mystery. And it's not everything that they will reveal. They reveal to you the things that makes it look attractive, that makes you suspect it less, that makes you, you know, think that it is not harmful. Let me not just say too much. Let us go in and watch the video. I'll be seeing you at the end of the video. God bless you. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. I am uh, talking today about a subject that I am very interested in. I've been wanting to know these things for a long time, and I believe I'm going to get the true answer today. I'm talking to my guest, Stephen Dong, a former Grand Master of the Mason in California. I'm glad you came. Thanks. The name of our show is The uh, Fallen State. Do you believe human beings are in a fallen state? Don't we have free will? No. Well, I think we do. You think we have free will? We can choose to be good. We can choose to be bad. We can choose to be part of the group, we can choose to be in harmony with creation, and we can choose otherwise. So we are in a fallen state. Are you saying that we can choose not to be in it? I believe so. And what is a fallen state? I think anything that distorts your relationship with the creator or the creation. Amazing. And so you believe we have a free will? I do. Have you ever done negative or bad things to yourself? Of course. And did you want to do them? Uh, wanting to do them? Uh, or not being able to control doing them. Did you want to do bad things to yourself, to hurt yourself? I don't know that we affirmatively choose to do that. Sometimes the circumstances lead us to make bad choices. But did the bad things that you have done to yourself over time, did you want to do those things? Did I want to do bad things to me? Um, I suppose every choice we make can have a bad or a good consequence to it. And so did you want to do bad things to yourself in, over the years? I, I, I'm not sure that I would have framed a question like that when I did that. And so what's the answer to it? What do you mean? Did what, you want to do bad things to yourself? I don't think we ever want to do bad things to ourselves. How about you? Did you want to do bad things to yourself at the time? Mm. I suppose when you know something is going wrong and uh, you feel some compulsion to do it, but um, sometimes emotion So did you in. want to do bad things to yourself? I, I don't know that I ever framed a question like that. And so now that the question has been framed like that, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what you're aiming at. I'm a lawyer, so maybe I... <laughs> you're maybe, a lawyer? Yeah, maybe... maybe well, you're smarter than I Maybe you need to rephrase the question. I'll rephrase the question. Okay. Did you want to do bad things to yourself when you did them? 
I, I don't know that anybody ever really wants to do bad things to themselves. How about you? Did you but, want? But to we do can make sometimes some bad choices that lead to bad results. So, did you want to do bad things to yourself? Did you want to do that? I, I, I don't think anybody affirmatively goes out. I mean, unless you commit suicide. So, what's the answer? Did you personally want to do bad things to yourself when you did them? I can't think of an instance where before I did something, I affirmatively made the choice. I'm going to do something that's bad. And so the answer is yes or no. I don't think ever before I did something that I regretted later that I affirmatively made the decision. But you're going around the question. He's evading the question, Judge. Did you want to do bad things to yourself when you I did that? I don't think I'm evading the question. You won't give me a yes or no. You're just like a lawyer. No, I, I, you asked me to describe a circumstance no, that I did. No, I asked you a question. I didn't ask you to describe. Well, well maybe there's not an answer to I, your question, The question Jesse. is, you say you have a free will. That's right. And so my follow-up, did you want to do bad things to yourself when you did them? I don't think ever when something happened that I regretted that I... I didn't ask you if you regretted it. Did you want to do... I'll be better in the court than you. Did well, that, you, that could be. <laughs> did you want to... By the to, way, I, I don't go to court. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm a telephone lawyer. A telephone? I'm not a court lawyer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did you want to do bad things to yourself when you did them? I don't think before I did anything, I made an affirmative decision. I want to do something bad to myself. And so why did you do, use your free will and not? Because sometimes, sometimes free will is overcome by emotion. So maybe you don't have uh, a free gen will. Genetic predisposition. Maybe you don't have a free will. Oh, I, I, I think that you do have free will because but just why because would you always do good? Just, just because just because you're genetically predisposed maybe to do something to take a certain risk. What does that mean? Genetically predisposed. Uh, I, I think we're all genetically predisposed to do certain things. To do bad things to ourselves. I think so. Uh, no, I never heard okay. of that. Oh well, yeah. Er, early onset alcoholism, for example, generally strikes when you between 12 and 13. But genetic. Generally get it from your dad. Mostly happens with boys. They're genetically predisposed no, to substance abuse. No, that comes from depression. That comes from becoming angry about something. And now you have anxiety or depression. No, no, I, I you think, try to I, make yourself no, feel I think better. that those in the field would say that, that that's genetic. Amazing. Er, early they onset. Wrong. Never pay attention to the experts. Okay. They're right. liars. They have too much knowledge. Well, 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 but well, I okay, well, let me tell you one of my life experiences. Okay. Well, one thing I do is genealogy. Okay. And I do it based on... Genetic testing, you use saliva, it profiles it, and then it matches you up with other who are, people who are family members. Right. I've helped adopted people find their biological families. That's beautiful. Who, who have said, when they've come to me, I never felt like I had anything in common with my adoptive family. Right, I understand But when that. they met their genetic family, they completed one another's sentences. Right. They had the same life view. Now, now how could that be so if they were not genetically predisposed to but that. But that's not, it may, I mean, you may have the same genes as some of your parents, your family member, but it's more spiritually, spiritual connection rather than genetic connection. Because I felt that way about my stepfather. He was a good man, mm -hmm. but I could never connect to him. Right. And only when I met my real father, I, right away. Right. Immediately, but it was spiritual connection, not genes. Mm. Yeah, well, how, how can you have a spiritual connection to somebody that you've never met, that you can complete their sentences, but because, if it's not some way or another genetically pre-coded in Because you? you came from your father, and so that's where you get your identity from. from okay, well, the father. only thing your father gave you is the genome you have. But he gave me his spirit, too. Oh, well, that has to be in the genome. No, it's outside the gene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk to you about Freemasonry. Okay. And uh, at one point, you were the Grand Master of Mason in, uh, in uh, California. Correct. So how did you first become a Mason and why? Uh, well, I became a Mason when I was 21. And what made you do that? Uh, my dad was a Mason. He still is. My dad's still alive. He's still living? Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 69. You're 69? Right. So your dad is like 100 or 69? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, dad's, no, 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 dad's, uh, dad's 91. That's amazing, man. Yeah. It's not Longevity that. runs in my family. It's genetics. <laughs> Genetics. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Are you close to your father? Uh, yeah, he lives out uh, in uh, Thousand Oaks. Really? Mm -hmm. And do you call him daddy? I call him dad. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. And so... Who we look alike. Oh, you look alike? Right. That's good. Yeah. I love... Reassuring. Alike. Yeah, sure is. Reassuring. And nothing like looking like your father. Right. Um, and before becoming a Mason, 
because your father was one, right. you already knew what they stood for and what they were about. Well, absolutely. Our family friends were Masons. My grandfathers were Masons. I traced my Masonic ancestry back, as far as I know, to a fourth great grandfather who was a Mason. Really? Hmm. I also read the, the Masons of your group is uh, self-improvement. I'm sorry, right. the mission of your group is self-improvement. Right. What does that mean, self-improvement? How do you do that? Make yourself a better person. How do you do that? Well, well first of all, the, the Masonic concept is that we're supposed to learn how the world works and what our role is in improving it. And before we can work to improve the world, we need to start with me, improving me. And, and Freemasonry works based on symbolism that we borrowed from the stonemasons guilds of the Middle Ages. And through those symbols, we get a better understanding of what our obligations are to one another. So did you have to do self-improvement when you became a Mason? That's just the natural part of the process of being a Mason. And so what was wrong with you prior to becoming a Mason that you had to improve upon? Um, well, I wouldn't say things were wrong. It's how I could be better. And how did you become better? What did you become better? How did you become a better person? I mean, what, I mean, what did you become? What, what is the evidence of yeah. that? Uh, well, I like to think I'm more patient. I like to think I'm more altruistic. What is altruistic? Doing for others. Oh, okay. With no expectation of getting something in return. And you were not that way prior to becoming a Mason? No, I wouldn't say that. I'd say maybe I'm better at it. Oh, I got you. And do they teach you to become that way, or did you just no, that's the point. That, that's the point of self-improvement. You work on yourself. And do they tell you to do that? Like in the meeting, we all have the Mason meetings. Right. Do they say, okay, to me it's about, today's meeting is about self-improvement? No. We wouldn't do that. How do you know to do self-improvement once you get there? Well, that's the whole reason to join is for self-improvement. So you to know that when you come. Oh, to know that before you become a Mason? Right. But how would I know if I'm, my, parents, my father is not a Mason and I know no one is a, who is a Mason and they have secrets. They won't tell you the secret, right? I have an uncle who is a Mason. I'm like, what is the secret? He won't tell me. And Jesse, so, there, there are exposés written about the Masonic ritual. You can find them in libraries, you can find them on the internet. So it's a secret out. Do the Masons still have a secret? Um, well, I guess it depends on what you mean by a secret. I think some of the things we're talking about, obviously people don't generally understand. How, how do you do self-improvement? How would I know that that's a mission of a Mason, of the Masonry, Mason, Mason to do self-improvement if no one told me beforehand? Oh, I suppose would word I of mouth, reading about it. Oh, I see. It's all out, the information is out there. So right. Like, oh, I and, and most people who come to become a Mason have already done some due diligence about the organization. There's something about us that attracts them to us. I think the fact that we've been around for such a long period of time, the fact that it's an intergenerational environment, it's not sitting in front of a computer every day. We don't allow discussion of religion or politics at Lodge. How long has masonry, Freemasonry been around? Well, and, and and I think probably what you're asking is how old is it? The, how it's long? It's not a religion, right? It's like no, of a course, club. no. It's not and a so, religion. how long has this organization been in, in the making? How many years? Well, well, at least as far as being a organization that's about spirituality and philosophy, uh, since the early 1600s. Did it start in the United States? Uh, no. When it, did it start? Uh, the British Isles, England, and Scotland. Oh, I see. That's amazing. Why yeah. did they allow it to come to the United States? Can you be a, mace, a Freemason if you believe in God? Well, you need to believe in a supreme being and a future existence to be a member of my lodge. So is God the, the supreme being that you need to believe in? Uh, if that's how you choose to understand it, yes. Because some people believe in Satan as a supreme being. Can they be a Mason, a Freemason? Uh, well, you, have to believe, you need to believe in a su supreme being that's for good. So I'd assume uh -huh. that when you talk about Satan, you're talking about something that's for bad. Right. Yeah, no. Do you, uh, when you join the organization, do they ask if you believe in God or Satan? Uh, no, they ask if you have a belief in a supreme being and a future existence. And what is a supreme being? It's a term of art that uh, arose during the Enlightenment. You, you may know from history that during the period of the Enlightenment, there was a great deal of religious disruption in Europe, and people of the Enlightenment tried to find a way to transcend the sectarian disputes that then were raging through Europe between the Catholics and the Protestants. And one way to do that was to phrase God as the supreme being. And it's not being in that it's a thing like 
uh, a bearded guy sitting on a carnelian throne with wheels of fire. It's uh, a being an assumption uh, of functionality. Not, not a thing, but a concept. What it does. I don't you. And is it possible to improve your life without a belief in God as a mason? Well, uh, but, but part of being a mason is, as I said earlier, is understanding how the world works and how I can make it better. And it's all premised that there is some underlying harmony in the universe that is our obligation to be part of. I mean, what the, probably the most fundamental symbol of Freemasonry is geometry. Geometry measures how the planets move in their orbits. It's something that Pythagoras observed uh, in his school of philosophy. Uh, the music or harmony of the spheres, as his school referred to it. We, we can see it today in quantum physics. Everything, Jesse, ultimately is energy. The things that look like they're material are really energy on a quantum level interacting in a fashion that makes it look like it's material. And on a quantum level, that energy interacts in a fashion that obeys certain rules. That if scientists try to get it to disobey those rules, it will bounce back again. It's exactly what Pythagoras observed in the harmony or music of the spheres. Candidly, I see the supreme being in that energy and how it behaves. And it is my obligation as a human being to be in harmony with that energy. I have a good friend who speaks the same way, and he's black. Okay. Now I got to ask him if he was a, if he's a mason or not. Okay. Because <laughs> he sounds just well, like that. Okay, well the masons don't have a monopoly on seeing God in this fashion. In your private moment, do you, moments, do you call him God or supreme being at all times? I, I don't even address the divine by calling the divine by name. What, so how do you address him? Uh, well, I start by prayer. That so, I address God through prayer. And how do you pray? Uh, well, the, the weekly opportunities when I go to church. I come to church, I kneel, I clear my thoughts, uh, I reflect on things I wish I hadn't done. Uh, how about, and sort of get inspiration to, to be better. And when you're alone at home, do you do it the same way? That's how you pray as well? Uh, oftentimes I actually do it more in the car because oh, okay. that gives me an opportunity to because the whole point of prayer is to sublimate your own feelings, become a vessel, right. empty yourself of everything else. Amazing. I read that you can't discuss politics or religion at your events. Is that true? Right. That is correct. And why can't you discuss politics or religion? Because Freemasonry's membership transcends politics, transcends religion. My, my lodge in Santa Monica, we have Christians, we have Jews, we have Muslims who belong to our lodge. Uh oh. How long have you had that? Uh, I guess I'd have to go back and check, check our lodge records. But, uh, but Masons have been Christians, Jews, and uh, Muslims. Um, I'll just, just look at the English Empire. As, as, as England went through and, and colonized and brought its culture to its colonies, Freemasonry came with it. But how, how is it possible to get along with the, with the Muslims in the same organization when they hate? The Christians and Jews, they think that you're infidels. Uh, not the Muslims that belong to my lodge. Oh, really? So when you're praying, do you keep one eye open? Of course not. <laughs> Make sure they don't do an Allah u Abba on you. Of course not. You know, you trust them? I trust Brother Mason, yes. Really? Yeah. And women are not part of the Mason, right? No, that's not true either. There are women who are Masons. In, in Santa Monica, for example, where my lodge is. I belong to two lodges in Santa Monica. Uh -huh. Uh, one of my lodges, uh, there's another lodge that meets in our building that has both men and women who are members. In my other lodge in Santa Monica, their building has a lodge that has uh, only women who are members. When did women become members of the Freemasonry? Uh, well, you can trace women's involvement in Freemasonry to probably the uh, latter part of the 1700s. Why did they let them in? Women always want to get involved with men's stuff, huh? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they don't want us to have anything to us. But Mozart's magic flute, the opera, is about the hero 
deciding he wants to be a Mason. And the first act of the opera is about the due diligence he goes through in deciding to become a Mason. The second act of the opera is actually a thinly disguised initiation of him into Freemasonry. And the woman, the heroine of the opera, she is also going through the same process. That's amazing. And that, and that was, that, that opera was written in 1791 for, by Mozart for his Masonic brethren and the women who were part of the Masonic adoptive rite. Are you disappointed they let the women in? Of course not. But that's when all the confusion came. Because women were involved in things? Right. Uh, I, I don't think, true? I don't think my mom would agree, or my grandmothers would agree to Are that. Are they Mason? Were they, they, they were very strong, strong-willed women. Oh, uh, see, that, that's why you don't want them in there. Well, actually, <clears throat> my lodge is only men. Oh, good. Right. Keep it that way. Okay. Have they tried to get in yet? To, to our lodge? Uh-huh. Uh, no, because our lodge is only men. Is this true that you believe in a future existence? A future existence, right. And what does that mean? That there is some part of me that continues after I'm gone. Does it mean like a heaven and a hell? Heaven or hell? Uh, I don't really define it that way. How do you define it? I, I think that there is something that happens to me afterward. But you don't know what? I think I've had a foreshadowing of it. Have you died already once? Um, well, I've, I've been visited by the Holy Spirit on a couple of occasions. Really? What did he look like? It, was, it wasn't a he and it wasn't a look like. What did it look like? It wasn't an it. <laughs> it wasn't a thing, Jesse. Was it a transgender? It was it a what? A transgender person. <laughs> it. it wasn't a thing, Jesse. <laughs> and so how do you know? So tell me about <laughs> this. I, I was overcome by this tremendous sense of well-being. Uh, the, the room sort of had a pinkish hue to it. I felt warmth. I had an ability to see that I had not experienced on any other occasion. Tremendous clarity. How long did it stay? Uh, not very long, a few minutes. Were you sleeping in bed? Nope. Were you asleep? You were just awake? Uh, twice it happened when I was in bed. Another time I was, I was relaxing. And what did it want? Didn't want anything. It just came by? We didn't actually come by. <laughs> it, was, it was a feeling that I had, Jesse. Did you smoke pot? No, Jesse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you ever smoked pot? I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> that means yes. That doesn't necessarily mean yes. In the court, the judge would assume that means yes. Okay, well, you're not supposed to assume anything in court. Yes, you mean, that's right, you're right. Uh, so when the Holy Spirit came by, how did that enhance your life? Or did it enhance? Uh... Well, it reassured me that there's a supreme being. I wanted to ask you. And, and, and it also gave me, I think, a foretaste of what my passage is to the other side. And it so, gives, gives you a certain comfort. It reinforces your faith and hope. And Do you believe there's a heaven and a hell? I, I would not describe it that way. I, I, that, that, that is my, not my sense of things. What would happen if you recognized it as heaven or hell? And I, hell. I, I have never, I've never conceived of it that way. Would you consider yourself a Christian? Yes. You're a Christian. Mm. Um, and so, have you ever heard that there's a heaven and a hell? I've heard people say that. But you don't, do you believe anyone goes, go there once they die? I'm only concerned about me. I'm not concerned about anybody do else. Do you have kids? I do. Have you been married? Are you married now? Yes. And are you concerned if your wife and kids would go to hell or heaven? Well, because I never really think of it in those, that context, no. And so what do you think of when, when they die? You think, well, when my kids or my wife die, they're going to... I, I, all I know is where, where I think maybe I am going to go. And where do you think you're going? Well, I, I think that that pink feeling of well-being, of warmth, of, of clarity, uh, I think that that's a transition to something beyond that that I've not now yet experienced. Well, you probably should ask the Holy Spirit to come back with blue, not pink. Oh, why? Blue is for the male. <laughs> 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 so you better, if I just say, wait a minute, thank you for coming, but you have on the wrong color. Yeah, well, I... The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because he was in pink, he was coming from, for your wife, not for you. Okay, all right. He just, you were in the way. Okay. She was uh, not in the room at the time. See there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> 
One, one thing I, uh, so let me ask, do you, do you believe that we die when we, when we leave the earth in a physical sense? Do, do you believe we die or we stay alive? Uh, but, well, well, because I'm a lawyer, how, do you find death? How do you define death? When we drop our bodies on earth, when you're no longer in the physical on earth, right? Right. What happens to your spirit? Uh, well, I've already explained that I think that this sensation, the pink sensation <laughs> I talked to you about, I think that that happens and something comes beyond that and I don't know what that is. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, one, I read that one of the tenets uh, of the Freemason yeah. is truth. Right. What is truth? And, and, and how do you find this truth? Uh, okay. May, may, may I paraphrase some scripture for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In John, the Gospel according to John, you know, there's a part where Jesus is talking uh, to Pilate. And they have this debate about who Jesus is. Right. And Jesus talks about why he came into the world. And Pilate asks him the question, what is truth? And what was Jesus' answer when Pilate asked that question? I have no idea at this point. Well, Jesus didn't have an answer. What did he say? He didn't say anything. He just looked at him? Well, John's Gospel doesn't really say how, how he looked, but John's Gospel doesn't record a response. Oh, I said. Truth is for each of us to determine for himself. Amazing. Truth. How do you find that truth? That, that I just made the point, Jesse. You find it for yourself. Oh, so if I went and joined a Mason and at one of the class, they say, our but, tenet is true. I cannot raise my hand and ask, well, how do you find this truth? Oh, and would they tell me you got to find it for yourself? Well, number one, Jesse, we, we don't really have classes where we ask questions like that. Oh, okay. Right. Do you guys have meetings? We do. And like everybody just get together, do you discuss or just fellowship together? Uh, well, uh, there, there's ritual involved. It's like liturgy in, in the church. There, there's certain things that we do to open lodge. We confer degrees and there's a ritual ceremony that we use to do that. Okay. I can just say one or few things then I will let you watch the video to the end. I'm just pausing it, I'm not stopping it. So. All right, thank you very much. I, I have to pause it here so that I just give you a few things and then allow you to watch the entirety of the video. From the beginning, you saw how difficult it was for the man to say something because whatever he would answer that would agree with the interviewer's opinion about his program, which has to do with the you know the, the, the falling nature, you know, would have made nonsense of their mantra of becoming a better version of you when you join the society. You know, so that in itself, you know, was a tug of war and he failed to answer that. Then you look at, you know, his ancestry and his background that up to his fourth generation, we are all Masons. Then you need to ask yourself, what? Now, it is because of deception and whatever they thought that they knew. Now, even he in this generation and dispensation that he found himself still felt at some point that the Holy Spirit came to him. And that is how the devil deceives, you know, people. All right. That is... There are sometimes you will hear some young girls that came out and they say that they were crowned the wife of Satan, that they saw Lucifer himself. Man, it is not true. The devil has a way of deceiving. He's a liar. Jesus really painted him well. You see, uh, a certain Nathan I, 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 I showed you a video here where he met some, some demons in some uh, uh, terrestrial um, atmosphere that introduced himself as Jesus, but not Jesus Christ. He said it was Jesus and Genesio that claimed that he was the same Jesus that, that died and that he made a mistake because it was because of that mistake that he made that is why he is suffering he's been, he's been suffered so that he will completely deceive Nathan not to think that the Jesus Christ we are calling on you know is real he wanted him to believe and he made him believe that that was the same Jesus he met at that uh, uh, astral terrain you understand so that is the nature of the devil so they, they believe in a supreme being, but you can just believe in, in anything. He sees himself as a Christian, but he doesn't believe in heaven and in hell. He knows definitely that there is a life after here, but he doesn't know where to go. And that is where and how, why Jesus Christ is exceptional. He's the only, he's the only person that promised his followers a true life after now. In John chapter 14, verse 1, he said, You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again to take you unto myself so that wherever I am, there ye may be 
also, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So that took care of it when a Christian is asked, what, where do you think you're going after, after this life? He knows there is, there is a heaven, there is a hell. He is a Christian, he claims, he considers himself as a Christian, but he doesn't believe in hell and in heaven. Like I, I mentioned earlier, the devil appears to him in a feeling, and that is why I tell people, see, every religion has a spirit. And so also, so many of the books you see out there are written by the influence of a, a, a spirit. Now, if you're reading an occultic book, definitely the spirit that wrote that book will come to influence you. And when you are reading, you think you are getting some kind of insight and revelation, and you think that you are, you are still in line. Like I kept mentioning, don't worry, I will bring that video. That the preacher said that the sixth and seventh books of Moses were written by Moses. And, but that, you know, uh, the whites removed it in order to have influence on us. Whereas the sixth and seventh books of Moses were magical occultic books. And, a, you know, a Christian preacher, very popular, had seen it, believed that, that those were the books written by Moses, but was expunged from the, 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 the book. Of the Bible because of, of control. Now, so all this and more, I will I will just stop here and I will just let you whatever else you discover. Which are, there are so many points that you can pick from here. Let us know in the comment section. Thank you very much for being around and God bless you. I will be coming away in the next video till then. I want to wish you a happy viewing. Please watch till the end and in the next video I will see you from me to you. Shalom. Right. I saw, I went to your website, and mm -hmm. I saw these men in these blue aprons. Okay. What are the aprons for? Uh, the aprons are a symbol. Of what? Uh, well, uh, of purity. A white, a white apron is a symbol of purity. And, and it harkens back to the operative stonemasons guild. Uh -huh. uh, the stonemasons, to protect themselves, their clothing, and themselves from being hurt by flying chips from chiseling away at stones. Right. They would wear a lambskin that uh, would be a dry hide um, that would still have the legs on it. And they would take, you know, the front legs and they would tie it over their shoulders. And then they would let the thing drop and then they would use the hind legs to sort of tie it in oh, front I of them. So that's not like a chamois right, you'd yeah. use to dry your car with. Right. Okay. The aprons that we wear today are, you know, a symbol of that. That's why there's a flap on the front that would be like the head of the sheep. And it, oh, it had a little design on it. Oh, there can be all different kinds of designs. Oh, okay. Depends on what station you have in the lodge or oh, I see. what particular group that you belong to that's wearing the apron will have a different design. How old do you have to be to join the Mason? Uh, now tw uh, 18. It used to be 21. Okay. When I, when Why I did it uh, make it younger? Uh, other places besides America at a younger age, so we, we adopted that. And what is brotherly love? Spirit of affection that you feel for another brother. And the goal is that something you feel for a brother because you trust him, right. that eventually you can feel that same feeling for somebody who's not a Mason. That's amazing. And I wanted to ask, I've heard this, I don't know if it's true, have all the U.S. presidents been Freemasons? They have not been. Yeah, so that's not true. That is not say. true at all. George right. Washington was. Yeah, I was going to ask you about him. Right. Why do people think that all of the U.S. presidents have been Freemasons? Uh, I don't know, Jesse, why they think that. That's just a rumor, huh? A uh, bad rumor. And uh, you, you mentioned that George Washington was a Freemason. Correct. Why did he become one? Uh, a lot of the men of the Enlightenment were Freemasons. Uh, Dr. Margaret Jacob, who's a distinguished professor of history at UCLA, theorizes that the Masonic lodges were actually the prototype that for democratic institutions, that the way we understand we're to interact in a democracy was really developed in Masonic Lodge in the context of Europe where democracy did not exist, and that the fellowship, the association that the Masons had was where they learned the skills that they later took outside the Lodge to develop democratic institutions. So people who were interested in democracy during the era of the Enlightenment it was kind of a heretical idea at the time, right. went against the established order, that they joined these lodges where they could experience the, this kind of spirit of democracy to develop these, this institution within their lodge, and that they then took what they learned and developed there out to society then to develop democratic institutions for society at large. Interesting. Why haven't 
all of the U.S. presidents become Freemasons? Well, I suppose everyone makes their individual choice. They know about it, and they know they could if they wanted to, right? There are all different reasons why people don't become Masons. Yeah. What's one reason they don't become one? Uh, well, the, there was a divide among uh, men in Massachusetts uh, during the time of the uh, emergence of America in the late 1700s, who were not Masons. Uh, John Hancock, for ex ex instance, he was a Mason, but John Adams and his son, John Quincy Adams, were not Masons because they identified the Masons with the English aristocracy, and they were strict Calvinists, and they had this antipathy towards the English gentry. Oh, I see. Now, Paul Revere was also a Calvinist, but he was a very active Freemason, but his father was a Huguenot. They were from France originally, and the French Calvinists did not have the same antipathy towards the English gentry that uh, the English Calvinists did. So while the English Calvinists might have been more unlikely to become a Freemason because of this antipathy towards the English gentry, other Calvinists did not have that. Uh, I have a lot of Dutch ancestors uh, that were Calvinists, and, and they were Masons. Mm. So it had nothing to do with Calvinism. Yeah. It had sort of this social antipathy right. that people had towards the English aristocracy. That's amazing. And has uh, masonry changed since the founding fathers? Uh, the time of the every, founding everything, fathers? Jesse, in life is cyclical. The more things change, the, the more they remain the same. Yeah. And, and we oftentimes go back to prior periods and essentially retrace what happened then. I mean, you look at the classical and the romantic eras, but we continually retrace the dichotomy right. between those two. Masonry today is probably more like Masonry was during the 1790s when Mozart and Voltaire and other continental leaders uh, were of the Enlightenment. We see that more in lodges today. C certainly Freemasonry is much more spiritual, philosophical than it was during the 1950s. So you mentioned a lot about, or you talk about a lot about the Enlightenment time era. Yes. Would that ever come back? Enlightenment ever come back? Well, I, I think there are those who think it's back now. Why would they think it's back? Because the Enlightenment is about reason. But we don't have any people reason on, on Earth anymore. Uh, well, I think there are those, Jesse, who disagree with you. Really? Mm. Well, I don't know about in the Mason. I'm just not finding this out. Why do people that belong to the Mason tell me that it's a secret? They can't tell me what it is. And you're telling me everything. I, I haven't. You haven't told me everything? Well, I haven't told you what our modes of recognition are. What, what are they? That's the way a Mason makes himself known to another Mason. And show me. Well, I couldn't because I, I promise not to. Well, I won't tell. Well, but your viewers might. Yeah, I'll close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I couldn't tell you anyway because you're not a Mason. Will you tell me? I'll, I'll, You'd have to become a Mason, Jesse. Well, will you tell me after the show's no. over and then no. we'll go in private? You can no, tell no, me. no, no, no. <laughs> what would happen if you told me? I would violate my obligation. And then what would happen to you? They I, won't know because I won't tell them. Yeah, well, I would know. Would you tell them you told me? The fact that I would know I violated is sufficient. Would you have to kill yourself? No. Uh, uh, I heard that the Freemasons have their own Bible. Is that no, true? No, not true. They don't have their own Bible. No. In fact, in, in our lodges, you can choose to be uh, obligated on the Old Testament, the Old and New Testament, or the Koran. Oh. Amazing. Right. Um, so are black people a part of the Mason? Now? Yes, we have black members of our lodge. Why would y'all let them in? <laughs> <laughs> I already suggested to you, Jesse, you might want to consider it. But so. I'm not into the black thing. Oh, okay. So now that they're in there, do you have to worry about racism and all that stuff? Well, that, that's the point about Freemasonry. It transcends race. So they don't talk about racism? No. And do y'all have to be nice to them so they won't we're, get into we're, that? We're the same with everybody, Jesse. And so that, that's the whole point. That's, that, 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 that's the beauty of Freemasonry, that we treat everybody as a brother. And, and the idea is to extend it beyond the law, it's to treat people that we meet out on the street as, as a brother. So when they come in and fill out the application, do you say, well, don't come in with that mess about racism? No, we don't, we don't mention, we don't ask about their race or anything. Oh, have, 
at one time, blacks were not a part of the Freemason, right? Well, no, uh, blacks were Freemasons. It's just they don't have their own separate group. Oh, yeah. Right. That's amazing. Why do some people believe that Freemason are, Freemasons are in control of American society? American oh, society. I, yeah, well, I guess everybody's trying to look for some hidden force. The, the wizard, as in the Wizard of Oz, who's behind the drape. And so you're saying you're not in control of American society. Well, we can hardly control ourselves. And if you were in control, would you say yes, and here's why? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hypothetical question. That may be the secret. You're in control of American okay, society. Okay, all right. Do y'all have a lot of money? Uh, well, well, we have some endowment funds, yeah. You own the bank? No. Uh, are, free, uh, are Freemasons... Um, um, guarding America's biggest secret. Mm, well, we, we, we don't really have a big secret. Once I become a Mason, would you tell me that? Well, you didn't discover that we don't have one. I will discover that you don't have one? All right. Uh, people think that you have one. Well, people think a lot of things. That you're guarding that and you yeah. won't tell no one. Yeah. I'm glad to hear this. Yeah. Uh, or how do will you sleep better tonight? I will. Okay. All right. How do Freemasons make a living? Uh, we do all kinds of things. I, I'm, I'm a lawyer. And what type of lawyer are you? Well, I started actually my career as a tax lawyer. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is the highest position in, in Freemasonry? Uh, to be the Grand Master. And how do you become the Grand Master? Uh, you're elected by your fellow Masons. Uh, do you make more money up there? You don't get paid anything to be Grand Master. Well, what's the purpose then? It's a volunteer job. But well, why? You're going to be grand with no money? <laughs> <laughs> There's more to life, Jesse, than money. So it's just the ego feeling of being a grandmaster. No, it's the opportunity actually to have an impact. Uh, uh, so, so some of the men who had the greatest impact on me were actually men who had been grandmaster, who were my dad's friends. Impact in what way? That they're my they dad's friends? Or that they had, that no, how did they impact? impact you, some of the grandmasters? Uh, because... They uh, approach life in a fashion that I would like to do also. Are you on your way to becoming one, a grandmaster? I was grandmaster 26 years ago. Oh, really? So you're up there? I've been there. And so if I went to a meeting, you'd be sitting on the throne up there? Uh, we don't have thrones. I'd have a different kind of apron on. Oh, you would? Right. And does it say grandmaster? No, it doesn't say that. Oh. It has a special <laughs> emblem on it. And do you tell us what to do? No, of course not. What's the purpose then? Okay, the, the best kind of mentoring, which is what I mostly do now, Jesse, is not telling people what to do. The best mentor is not somebody even that you know is your mentor. Uh, the best mentor is somebody who asks good questions, uh, who knows the questions to ask, who knows what you're struggling with, to ask you the question that really is addressing what you're thinking, to get you to talk about, to think about, to frame the issues that you're dealing with. But ultimately, a good mentor helps you make the decision. And that's like what that. Freemasonry is about. I like it's not that. about being told what to do. It's you having the equipment, the motivation to make good decisions. I like that. That sounds good. Are there any secret positions in the Freemasonry? No. No secret positions in there? No. That's amazing. Um, why do Masons use, uh, I noticed that they use a lot of symbolism. Symbolism, right. Why is that? Uh, because there's, a gr there's great power in a symbol. Um, and you do a lot of ritual things, too, you like. Right. But, but a symbol would be like geometry, which we've already talked about right. today. Right. Um, geometry, you can use that to uh, build this stage. Use geometry. So it's a mathematical thing. It's something used for construction. But it also has a symbolic meaning because it measures how the planets move in their orbits. It measures harmony. Therefore, it can be the symbol of harmony. It can be the symbol of the source of harmony. And we, we take from symbols, we see in a symbol what we're trying to find in life. <clears throat> That's why when you're 21 and you become a Mason or 18 now, a symbol can be presented to you, Jesse, and you'll find in that symbol the answer to something that's then troubling you. But 50 years later, you can s look at that symbol again, and you can see something in that symbol that you didn't see even yesterday, because today your needs are different. Amazing. That, 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 that's what makes a symbolic system one that can 
last over millennia because it addresses different people's needs based on the time and place they may be. I, it means that one person can take something different from that. It means you and I can take something different from that. Right. It means 200 years from now, that symbol is still going to have power because it's still going to address somebody's need. But because it's based on addressing your need, we don't tell you what needs it will address. We encourage you to figure that out for yourself. Amazing. How long does it take to become a member? Once I decide, if I decide I want to join, when would I be a full member? Well, we, we'd encourage you to come to the dinners we have before our monthly business meeting. You'd come, you'd meet the guys, uh, you'd come for several months. You would ask to become a Mason. No one will ever ask you to become a Mason. Mm. You'd ask for a petition. We would give you the petition. You'd read it, you'd fill it out. You'd have to ask two brothers to recommend you. Uh, they would. Uh, then three people whom you may not have met would come to your home, your place of business. They would interview you. Uh, so, you know, it's like four or five months before you get your application, a couple months for somebody to come by and talk to you. We would then vote on you. Probably within a month or two, you would take your first degree. There'd be things for you to memorize from that degree. You would then come back and get your second degree. Wow. Things to memorize from that. That sounds like a lot of work. No wonder y'all don't have many yeah. black people in there. That's too many. Jesse, improving yourself is work. <laughs> but we black. <laughs> <laughs> We're not required to. But <laughs> then there's the third degree, and then when you're done with that, a little more memory work, and you're a full-fledged mason. Keep so it that way. Do so it's it. about Don't 18 months. Black people in based on well, we have black members in our lodge. And they had to work hard, huh? We're the same as I did. I noticed that a lot of entertainers uh, uses Masonic symbols. Well, well, okay, a number of entertainers have been Masons. Nat King Cole was a very prominent Mason. Uh, so that's Duke what, Ellington was a Mason. That's why they use those symbols, because they have been a Mason before they are a Mason. Uh, I don't remember either one of those two using it, but I knew, do know that contemporary artists... Freemason. Who's the Great White Hope? You don't know who the Great White Hope is? Are you a Mason? Who's that? President Trump. Donald Trump? I don't believe Donald Trump's a Mason. Uh, did you vote for him? Uh, no, actually I didn't. Did you vote for Hillary? No, I didn't. Are you about to lose your Mason card? <laughs> if you had said yes. <laughs> do you love the Great White Hope? Dude, do I love Donald Trump? Yes. The Masons don't talk about politics in public. Uh, you want to tell me that after the cameras goes off? Sure, we'll talk then. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, are Masons the Illuminati? Uh, no, but there have been Illuminati who were Masons. What do you say Illuminati? Uh, well, Illuminati actually arose out of Rosicrucianism. What's that? Rosicrucianism. What's that? Uh, the rose on the cross. Oh. Right. They arose from that? Uh, it came out of that, 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 uh, that movement, if, if you will. What's their purpose? Of Rosicrucianism? No, to be Illuminati. Uh, it, it's actually to explore deeper what Rosicrucianism is about. But it's how and, and Rosicrucianism is hermetic Christianity. Have you ever been Illuminati? Um, no, I, I don't belong to an organization that calls itself Illuminati. Have you ever gone to one of their meetings? I don't, I'm not aware of any Illuminati meetings. Do you know it about it was Illuminati? No, I don't. It's all weird, doesn't it? Illuminati? Yeah. Uh, well, a word, it's just a word. It, Illuminatis have been uh, accused of controlling the world. Well, but a minute ago you were talking about Masons controlling yeah, the world. Yeah, they said about Mason too. Yeah, I don't think the Illuminati did either. If they did, if they did, Jesse, 
they've not done a very good job. That's for sure. Right. Uh, the president's uh, uh, Illuminati's, right? They have to join the Illuminati. Okay, well, 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 we've already been through that. They're, they're, not, they're not Masons. Well, no. we know they're not Masons. Are they Illuminati? Uh, as they said, Jesse, I don't, I don't know really that there are Illuminati. Oh, oh, you, that, you don't think it's just this? Well, I, I've not seen any evidence of it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I got to thank you for coming, man. Okay, that was fun. okay. nice to meet you, buddy.